and unfortunately I didn't get all of that um, tape but uh, Okay. Too bad I missed that. I was on a roll. Nah, you can hear it on the radio. You can hear it on the radio. And what's happening here, folks? They are doing this to people all over the country. My story, again, will make it. Uh, it will make it real apparent to you what is happening. They've done this to people. They're put uh, the old folks. They tried to do it to my mother. They put my mother on drugs. They did a triple bypass. I went to get her in the hospital. I went to see her uh, in in the nursing home that she was in after she had been discharged from the hospital, and she was drooling, couldn't talk, couldn't speak. I went to the doctor and said, "What's wrong with her? What's wrong with her? This isn't from a, a, a heart attack. This isn't from a, a bypass. What's wrong with her?" Oh. I, I'm uh, uh she's just, we we just have her on drugs, you know. We we do that with all the people here. Yeah, pack her up, I'm taking her out. Pack her up, I'm taking her out. And that's what they're doing to Mark Taylor, and that's what they tried to do to me. That's what they tried to do to me. They got Mark Taylor in there drugging him. They gave him Haldol back in two thousand and uh six. Now they got him here in in Arizona, and they're they won't tell what they're drugging him on. They won't tell. So his mother doesn't know. So we are organizing. We have got this story out for four hundred thousand people. Because when Donna came to me, my suggestion was. Call the DA, call the sheriff's department, call the uh, local police, uh, call the FBI, call the television companies, call the uh, radio stations there in uh, Phoenix, and tell them your story. She tried. Nothing came up. Nothing came up. Nobody wanted to hear about that. And that woman from the biker club, or the biker group, she didn't want to hear about it. You don't have, you know, all you're doing is telling my mother's side of it. No shit, Sherlock. These are the victims. And, and these people are victimizing. And they did that to you at 9-11. My brother's weapons of mass destruction. And, oh, Clay Douglas, oh, He's a, he's a truther. He's a birther. He's a radical. He's a conspiracy theorist. He's an anti-Semite. He's a, he, he's a racist. He's a racist. Yeah, he had some black guys on there, but he don't really like them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and what's going on, folks? It was almost predicted in 1963. <laughs> yeah, 1963. I hadn't joined the army yet. They had just murdered our president for going up against the Federal Reserve. And here was Captain James T. Kirk warning us about the New World Order. Captain's log, start date. Armageddon. The Klingons were too far distant to have been the attackers. What proof do we need? We know what a Klingon is. Now, in the halls of the uh, spaceship, there's a little glowing energy source floating around. 
It's come aboard the Enterprise. And it's called the New World Order. Most interesting. The bulk of your crew trapped. Your ship racing from this galaxy at wild speeds. How did I perform this sabotage, Kirk? All my men are here. Do you think some people in a cave? Do you think some people in a cave were able to have NORAD stand down? Do you think some people in a cave were able to have all of this happen? All right, and then in the on the decks of the Enterprise, those evil Klingons. Owl Klingons suddenly have weapons. Suddenly they have weapons. And of course the weapons are, are equally distributed to the crew on the Star Trek. On the uh, Enterprise. <laughs> Suddenly, everybody's armed with swords. A phantom calling. Imaginary distress calls. The creation of these weapons. We will, in fact, find uh, uh, weapons. Do you sense a pattern, Mr. Spock? The potential for the disastrous rise right, of Eisenhower exists and will persist. There is an alien on board which may have created the situation. Who cares what started it, Mr. Spock? It is apparently capable of manipulating matter and mind. I think we should just trust our president in every decision that he makes. This is war! There isn't any war! You serious? I've got men in sick bay. Some of them dying. Atrocities committed on their persons. Talk about making peace with these fiends. The alien is the real threat. That's the enemy we have to wipe That's the New World Order. Has a war been staged for us, complete with weapons and ideology and patriotic drum beating? He used gas? But where did he get the gas? From us. Recent events would seem to be directed toward a magnification of the basic hostilities. And here is that agenda. The project for the new... Am Project for the New American Censor Century. Rebuilding America's Defensive. And that was written by Dov Zakheim and uh, Michael Chertoff, among other neocons out there. The neocons being the malevolent entity that uh, they call the New World Order. They call the Bilderbergs. They call Al-Qaeda. They bring our drugs in, the drugs into this country, they addict you, then they arrest you, and you become fodder in the military industrial complex that the General Dwight D. Eisenhower just warned you about. Who, by the way, happened to be that terrible Swedish Jew. American century. Much of what these men wanted is coming true. They urged that the U.S. abandon the anti-ballistic missile treaty. It has. They wanted establishment of more permanent U.S. military bases abroad. That is happening in the Philippines and in Georgia and will likely happen in Iraq. Fourteen military bases. As a goal of foreign war. Fourteen permanent military bases bases have been built in Iraq and it's all lined that pipeline to run straight to Israel. Not just in Iraq. They wanted the U.S. as a global constabulary. Their word. Such aspirations are unlikely to be realized without a catastrophic and catalyzing event like a new Pearl Harbor. There you Apparently, go. it is by design that we fight. We seem to be part Military men are dumb, stupid animals to be used as pawns for foreign policy. Henry Pawns. What's the game? It's known as the Bilderberg Group. Could their objective be world domination? 
We must push outward if we are to survive. The Constitution has not given permission for us to so-called police the world. We have always fought. Either you are with us, or you are with the terrorists. As you've been listening to propaganda. Shut up! There's another way to survive. Mutual trust and help. We ought to stay at home, mind our own business, trade with people, and be friends with people, and we all would be a lot better off. There's a, an alien entity aboard the ship. It's forcing us to fight. We don't want to. We don't know what its motive is. We're trying to find out. You must help us. It is most urgent that we locate the alien entity immediately. The Federal Reserve is an independent agency, and that means basically that uh, there is no ag other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. Now do you believe what you want? What are you doing here? Kill the Klingons! Sever us, isn't it? Done! When the lieutenant became unconscious, the alien lost energy. It subsists on the emotions of others. This one appears to be strengthened by mental radiations of hostility, violent intentions. It exists on the hate of others. To put it simply, and it has acted as a catalyst, creating the situation. A cat catastrophic and catalyzing event like a new Pearl Harbor, folks. That's what they did. Here they are, 1967, I wasn't right about 1963, 1967, telling you about what was going to happen in 2012. This is the value of fiction, folks, and I do fiction, too. That need, it has brought together opposing forces in an effort to promote the most violent mode of conflict. We've got to get rid of it. Then all hostile attitudes on board must be eliminated. The fighting must end. And soon, oh, we're a doomed ship. We've got to pool our knowledge. We must find a way to defeat the alien force of hate. Stop the war now or spend eternity in futile, bloody violence. It has to stop. Look. And for the rest of our lives, a thousand lifetimes, senseless violence, fighting. <laughs> While uh, an alien has total control over us. It goes on and on, good old game of war, pawn against pawn, stopping the bad guys. While somewhere, some thing sits back and... United walks. States Federal Reserve! Starts it all over again. He is telling the truth. Be a pawn, be a toy, be a good soldier that never questions orders. <laughs> This is Captain Kirk. A truce is ordered. The fighting is over. Lay down your weapons. This is Kang. Cease hostilities. Cessation of violence appears to have weakened it, Captain. I suggest that good spirits might make an effective weapon. Get off my ship. You're a dead duck here. You're powerless. We know about you. And we don't want to play. Maybe there are others like you around. Maybe you've caused a lot of suffering, a lot of history, but that's all over. We'll be on guard now. We'll be ready for you. So ship out! Only a fool fights in a burning house. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> And, and folks, it's, uh, yeah, it's why I'm not happening right here ten years ago, doing pretty much the same thing I'm doing right now. I had a friend, he's been put in mental institution, he's been hassled to, this is what they did in the Soviet Union. They used the medical facilities, they used the psychiatrists. Do you, do you know why you're here, Mr. Douglas? Frankly, no. Smirking the psychiatrist said, well, you're here so I can 
determine whether you're competent or not. Right? That's why I don't understand. Of course I'm fucking competent. And then we went through the, you know, do you, do you, do you, do you see people, do you hear voices when no one's there? No. So, ten years ago, there was this man telling you, I, in a way I was a little bit jealous. In a way, just a little bit, because I talked for an hour to get across the point that he got across in four minutes. Have your eyes been blinded by the lies? Have your eyes been blinded by the lies? Hold on here. Let me find it. Now we can see a new world coming into view. A world in which there is a very real prospect of a new world order. The new world order does not mean surrendering our national sovereignty or forfeiting our interests.
said I was a little jealous of Carl, but that's not really true. Never been jealous of anybody in my life. And uh, I've done a few too. Now in the chat room here, one of the chat rooms, we're talking about Jesus, who, who happens to kind of figure prominently in my next novel. But all you church going freaks out there will probably not like it much because it'll shake your uh, understanding of things. And, but this one, uh, this one uh, is for a Dr. D-Charge. Dr. D-Charge. This one's for you. I can watch you at work while I am away. I know what you're doing while you were at play. I know who you see. I know where you go. There's no mountain so high or valley so low that could hide you from me. The man that knows. You should have thought twice before you made love to me and now you are mine through all eternity. I look like a man but that's how it goes. Sure as you are that this morning's sun's rose, sure am I. The man that knows. You might call me man, you might call me God, even the devil would get you a nod. I've been called Pan in times long ago. I've also been known as a man called Mose. Names mean so little to the man that knows. As Solomon the king, I built a temple to God. As God, I gave Solomon the magic rod to call up the demons from hell down below, and I called up myself for gifts to bestow on the man that has everything, the man that knows. I know you may doubt my story's true and wonder if I can do the things that I do, but if it's proof you need of how much I know, let your tongue lie. See how it goes. It's useless to lie to the man that knows. That was written for me by me about the same time period I wrote the novel 40 years ago. When I told you 40 years ago what was coming and what uh, the world was going to be like in an imaginary future, unfortunately in a lot of my art, uh, novels, which are available on my website, freeamerican.com, they... Uh, My fiction is more believable than the facts. Now, I'd like for you to go see my article on Mark Taylor. We are making a difference. We can make a difference. The New World Order doesn't have the power we've got, uh, and I've told you time and time again, just like Star Trek in 63, they want you to fight, they want you to hate, that's what these guys, these idiots and these trolls in the chat room are all about, to try to make you, to, if, if, oh, they, they want to make the white boys look like fools. That's why they, that's what they do it, that's why they do it, folks. 
and uh, yeah, somebody says in the chat room, Clay, have you considered that the predictions of many may end up to be a self-fulfilling prophecy? I've asked you. Let me let me rephrase that question. Is the prophecies in the Bible the ability to see the future? Or something written by technologically advanced people to let you know what was coming. In other words, is it prophecy or a plan? And that's the point. This is what my next book is all about, folks. I need your help to do this. Now, I just went to a book fair. There's thousands of books there, thousands of authors there. But very few authors touch and, and think and follow the logic along the lines that I do. I question everything and I urge you to do the same thing. Don't believe anything I say. Don't believe anything that I say. Check it out for yourself. See if I'm right. Now in my book, Mystery Babylon, this is the large print edition, folks. In this book, I've got not only history of the Bible, the history of Christian identity, I've got the the story of, of Operation Watchtower, our George Bush's little drug smuggling operation with his cronies, Manuel Noriega and, and Bill Clinton, who protected that little airport called Mina, Arkansas. The whole story's in here. The whole story's in here. I got this... I got this information over 20 years ago. Met William Tyree, who's featured in this in this article here, who is doing life in Walpole Prison. But even from doing life in Walpole Prison, William Tyree made a difference. He got this information out. He got the information to you. He was on my radio show. Folks, I am capable of making a difference. I am making a difference. I am just one man. I am just one man. But I've got reams and reams of books. I'm working on my next book, and there's not a publishing house in the country that will touch me. Why? For fear of the Jews. For fear of the Jews, hey, you know, he's, he's, Clay Douglas is anti-Semitic, he's a racist, he's every bad thing we can think of to call him, hey, you know, we, uh, if, if he didn't talk about the Constitution so much, we'd call him a communist. It's divide and conquer, that's what they do. I am trying to put it all back together. And 40 years ago, when I wrote that poem, Man That Knows, I wrote about the devil. I wrote about what uh, I thought was a devil at the time. And I didn't think of the devil. What if? Just uh, let, let me let me just let's just throw this out there. What if 5000 years ago there was a plot to take over the world? Function uh, and, and so they built the tower of Babel. They had the mystery Babylon. They had what if the God they wrote about in the Bible wasn't the good guy? Now, I'm not saying, not saying, there ain't a God. I absolutely believe there's a God, and I believe He talks to me every day, and He talks to you. It's called, it's called your conscience. It's called your soul. You've got a direct link with God. And woo, woo, the rabbis and the priests out there don't want you to know that. No, 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 no. You need us. You, you need us. We've got to be the ones to tell you what the Bible says. we got to tell you what the, what the Bible means. No, no, we got to tell you that Jesus was a Jew and, and the Jews were, 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 were the holy people. We, you know, and, and maybe that's the Jewish God. The devil. Satan telling you that he's God. He's God. What if?
What if Jesus was Lucifer and he was a good guy? What if? What if the, the God that did 